the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello and welcome back. Today is Sunday, June 6th, 2021, and this is the Sports Vote Campaign Update. So from last podcast, I want to make a brief correction here. Uh, I mentioned uh, Wire Act versus Roe. So the Wire Act is an act of Congress, a law, and the Roe versus Wade is a Supreme Court decision. Those are not exactly the same thing. That's too much to go into here, but I want to make that clear. The Wire Act is 60-year-old settled law passed by Congress, and Roe versus Wade is a Supreme Court decision. Not the same. So regarding gambling transactions uh, over the banks and using credit cards, there's a coding called 7995. Anybody who's been in this uh, online gambling world for any length of time knows exactly what I'm talking about. This was the deadly coding that could not be used. I remember this from Costa Rica. If you had a 7995 coded transaction, which means it's uh, attributable to gambling, then it would be declined by the merchant processor. So there's a lot of talk going on about FedCoin. I brought this up many years ago. Um, If they're smart, they'll follow through with it. So the betting total addressable market is shrinking and not growing. Do your own research. You don't have to believe me. Look for yourself. Uh, It's too many mouths to feed, too many people grabbing at the pie. And once again, the offshore market will always have an advantage against the onshore market due to tax and regulation. An awful lot of people are not going to want any part of either one of those things. So I'd like to reiterate again that what we need to do to bring all sports market uh, to a successful conclusion is one single thing that is either to find or create a physical or esports league and finance it doesn't have to be a large round uh, it doesn't have to be a, a you know a very big round it just needs to be enough that we can get the story out that's all we need to do to put this nearly 20 years of work into uh, into a successful outcome So in in the show notes, you're going to see the link at the bottom for league partners. If you know someone or if you yourself think you can do this, um, there is a vetting process we'll have to go through because it is important to uh, make sure that it succeeds. But the link is in there if you would like to submit your league um, or your league idea there. It's in the uh, show notes. So um, I will be releasing on July 4th the first series, maybe even just the first one, all sports market uh, non-fungible token. I want to be very clear about this. Uh, I said from the beginning that blockchain was fine. You can look back through my comments. My issue is not with blockchain. ACE's issue is not with blockchain. In fact, we have intellectual property that is um, registered around Blockchain, the issue is cryptocurrencies, which is layered on top of blockchain and creating money out of thin air. Um, I've taken a close look at the NFT idea, and it's more or less an authentication uh, of digital assets on the blockchain. This is not something I see any problem with. So we're going to start putting some of these out to see if it works or see what the the market receptivity is to it. Um, that very first one, I don't know if it's going to be one or just a handful, it's not going to be too many, uh, is going to be on uh, July 4th, upcoming July 4th, a little less than a month from now. And in addition to that, I'm going to be releasing my personal testimony, which goes back more than 40 years. The evolution of ASM actually started when I was a child, but it's it's too much of a story to put into a podcast. I've been thinking about this for many years now, uh, how I was going to do this, and I'm going to release that also on July 4th. Jock Market, another um, rip-off attempt. Uh, these are all player-based models. This has been tried and failed and tried and failed in excess of $50 million lost on this idea of players as an investment. Um, I, I don't see any angle that's going to work on this. It's been tried all different ways. It's not in category for us. Again, it's player based, but again, you know, it's, in fact, I think jock market has been around for a while. That's a familiar sounding name. Uh, the Biden wealth gap programs that are being mentioned, I'm watching that very closely. That bill, uh, discussion is happening right now. Uh, there is going to be some kind of an infrastructure plan, 
uh, you know, that is going to come out of this. And I'm going to take a very close look at it to see where and how we can get into this. Uh, I've said for a long time that ASM was a jobs plan uh, and an infrastructure plan. It's the same thing, okay? Jobs are infrastructure. You know, we need we need something new. That is absolutely a talking point I've said for a very long time. And um, it looks like that that messaging is aligning well with the current push for the bill. Some form of this is going to come out, looks like, between $1 and $2 trillion, somewhere between $1 and $2 trillion. And there's going to be a lot of stuff in there to address um, the wealth gap, which is absolutely a talking point I've had for a very long time, more than a decade, in fact. So um, crypto crackdown, that's, uh, that's happening. Um, it's happening in, in other countries, and it's happening here, and it's going to continue to happen here. Um, I think that may be the reason why you're seeing uh, Elon Musk uh, back away from Bitcoin, and it's actually getting bigger. I said that he'd find his way. He's finding his way. I think he got caught up in the hype without thinking it all the way through, like so many people do. Um, okay, so... Uh, yeah, in terms of the infra- back to the infrastructure plan, part of that too is debt reduction. Um, you know, meaning the country's debt reduction. We um, many months ago, maybe even longer than a year ago now, I put out the proposal on how we can add a fraction of a percent to the uh, basically a tax on the platform and the in, in the income that would generate. This is all part of that idea of, of ASM being part of the solution, not just for sports gambling, but for the economy and for, for the country's debt to, to help with debt reduction over time. Granted, it will take a long time, but we're not making much of an effort in that direction now. And, uh, you know, just putting transaction taxes on on trading of sports uh, shares would, would help considerably, not to mention the other flow-through taxes that will come from payrolls and business taxes and all that sort of thing. So um, the NFTs, yeah, so there will be in the description, um, the website you want to track is sportsharenft.com. That will just drop you right on the page, sportsharenft.com. That's the space to watch it. It will land on OpenSea the exact landing page where these will be posted. Uh, there will be details in there about, um, you know, of course, the digital assets themselves and why there's any value to it and all of that sort of thing will be uh, in there. That's where you're going to find it. So watch that space. Uh, I'm going to keep going back to this talking point because this is really the number one issue for us in terms of winning the game. Um, no matter how much money is thrown at the betting market and no matter how much noise they make, at the end of the day, the reason that we're going to win this, all they're doing is collecting customers for us. That's what they're doing. They're collecting customers for us because once the public understands that the option is available to invest versus bet, they're going to go that direction. The reason it's not happening now is because it doesn't exist. It do- we are it, okay? No matter what kind of lies and distortions are put out in the public domain, the idea of a sports stock market did not exist before I instructed Ace to write the code for all sports market, period. I can prove that with literally almost a terabyte of data, okay? So we are it. We are the category creator. Nobody has been able to come up with a better setup, and they've thrown tens of millions, at least 50 million, for sure, has been thrown away on trying to steal this idea. And once again, rather than being uh, sitting on your hands or trying to hurt things or destroy things, All that needs to happen, if anybody out there is truly invested in this project, if they have a stake in it somehow, the only thing that is required to to basically bring all this to fruition and steal all of the or a very large number of the gambling uh, customers that are being acquired at extraordinary losing, losing, basically they're losing money to acquire these customers. We don't have to deal with the courts to win this. All we need to do is show one public fundraise and then we te- we'll steal their customers because when the public truly understands that they can invest and instead of betting, they're going to go that way and all those customers will belong to us or nearly all of them will. So USFL is trying again. This is at least the third time that I can remember 
um, in my lifetime, maybe the fourth time they've tried to to start this league up. I the history of being able to to bring up a, a league, and again, that's that's our market proposition, right? Uh, is is very very it's very difficult. Now I don't know if we have any um, access to this group, but I do have it on on the list for uh, for our guys to see if we can reach out and get some communication going. So uh, they're trying again. Okay, so uh, yeah, the NFT information again, I've got this written in my notes several times. Just if you want to keep track of that, sport share, okay, those are single, all together, sportsharenft.com. The links will be in the, uh, in the podcast notes. So there was a story uh, about a better threatening, um, actually going, going to jail for, for threatening players, uh, you know, because uh, to win his bets, basically, it was a pretty big story on the front page of, of Yahoo News and a few others. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the future. This is what happens. This is only going to get worse if you continue to promote this trash that we knew better more than 60 years ago, 1961 Wire Act, actually exactly 60 years ago. We knew better 60 years ago that, that gambling is corruption. Repeat, gambling is corruption. There's no way to make it safe. No way to make it safe. So most people uh, choose to believe lies because of their pride and to forward their agenda. That's become very clear to me. Uh, you can show them indisputable facts and they'll go and find some other information that fits their narrative. Um, you know, the truth is the truth. Okay. If you want to live a lie, live a lie, you'll be accountable for it. But uh, it, it's absolutely clear to me, especially in, in, in the post January 6th, uh, riots, uh, you know, everything that's happened since then in the public domain and the political realm, that it doesn't matter what the truth is. People are not interested in the truth. That's really sad. They're not, they're only interested in finding what they're looking for to protect their pride, protect their agenda and, uh, not admit they made a mistake and do the right thing. So I guess that's, uh, that's just life on planet earth in the year 2021. Really sad actually. And, uh, Anybody who thinks that there's some reinstatement of Trump is uh, you, you're batshit crazy. Uh, you need a fifty-one fifty. Uh, that's a, look that up. California fifty-one fifty. So fifteen percent uh, last. Um, I think maybe in the last podcast or maybe in the uh, ASM forums I posted up that that's uh, a good idea. Fifteen percent if they can get un- uniformity uh, agreement. You know to to have that as the minimum corporate tax, it's going to really be a good thing all the way around. So looks like the G7, which are the seven largest economies, have agreed to to that as a minimum tax. That's a really solid uh, move in the right direction. Now, I again, I'll go back to what I said. Was, what we really need to do is have a, a 10% VAT. If every country, and even you know down to the local level, if everybody can agree to somehow divvy up a 10% VAT, you could wipe out all this stuff, including the income taxes. So, fifteen percent as a corporate income tax floor is is gonna is gonna sh- definitely have an impact. But one better would be just to get rid of all of that because people can play games with income taxes. You can't play games on a consumption tax. You know, at the if you if you if you tax at the point of spend, that's you know that's just about unavoidable and far easier to administer. And there's no games. Problem is a lot of these games are baked into the tax policy and, and being able to trade favors and do all this, this stuff that uh, you know you can play games with with income taxes, but you can't do that at the point of purchase. And a VAT, value-added tax, 10% uh, across the board. If the whole world did that, I mean, from you know Democratic Republic of Congo to New York City, if that took place... Um, you know, the, the, the municipal coffers would overflow with money, period. Okay, so Elon made uh, – it looks like he's starting to understand a little better the issue with cryptos. He made a Twitter post, I think it was yesterday, that said that, you know, money is just the accounting system for the flow of goods and services, nothing more. That's right. So, you know, uh, it's, it's nothing in and of itself. So when you talk about cryptos as money, it's hogwash because it's not – it's a speculative asset, and I wouldn't even call it an asset. It's a speculative nothing is what it is. It's not money. Okay, so DraftKings continues to sell, and the insiders making sure they get their money out of there. Again, I'm going to go back to this over and again because it's a fact. Um, 
For the the first thing is that it's being erroneously reported that their revenues revenues and earnings are not the same thing. They have no earnings. They've never had any earnings, and they lost two dollar more than two dollars for every one dollar they took in. Top level sales don't matter, folks. Top level sales don't matter. If you take in one dollar and you lose two dollars, you're not making any progress. And the insiders are selling, 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 suppressing the price of the stock. So they're getting theirs now. That's gamblers, okay? That's the kind of people you're dealing with. That's their mentality. Screw you. Um, doesn't matter if the thing makes any money. Look at the charts for yourself. Every year they lose more. They 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 rise the top level number, but the but the losses increase at an even faster rate than the income top level gross income does. Once again, earnings and revenues are not the same thing, okay? If Walmart, for example, sells something for ten dollars that costs them twenty one dollars. That's not making any. Pro- that's a, <laughs> you're giving away eleven dollars, okay, for every item that you sell, and that's the trend line, okay. So finally, on the courts, uh, the Seth Leon matter, which will go on as long as necessary to put it away. It is an absolute travesty. There was no trial. If if you want to call me a liar, send me the trial record where I was able to defend myself and I was able to call witnesses and cross-examine Seth Leon and cross-examine his witnesses. Show me that trial record or shut the fuck up, period. Okay? Didn't happen. So the Seth Leon matter is pending in both federal and state appeals court, federal and state appeals court, and there is a complaint against the Judicial Commission against the judge which has been replied to because it's very clear that he ignored not my not my filings because remember I'm muted okay I didn't get to say anything Leon okay Mr. Leon Mr. Leon I hope you're listening you filed lies in the court and you doubled back on yourself and you made false statements and the judge did not did not do the right thing, did not recognize those lies that you made to the court and ruled against me anyway and kept me muted. It is on the record where I was told while I was on the phone with the attorney that I would not be able to speak. That's on the record. That That is a violation of my constitutional rights. It's not going to stand. Okay. Now, on the SEC matter, there are now two lawyers working on this. One is a local D.C. attorney, and the other is a, uh, a gentleman who was part of the USFE deal way back. You remember before the crash, uh, you know, when we were 10 steps from getting this thing out the door and the financial crash happened? Well, the general counsel of that uh, United States Futures Exchange uh, has been been communicating with us ever since. Um, Alpers, Alpers talked to him quite a bit. And uh, he's the one that's helping us there, and he entered the case on Friday. So there's a local D.C. attorney, and then there's uh, Jim Falvey, who is um, former general counsel of United States Futures Exchange. So that's that's all there is to say on the uh, legal matters. There is nothing else. So thank you very much for your time, and I'll speak with you again soon. Bye now.